Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, we shall be looking at the proof of the theorem that we have studied in the last video along with the definition for the positive square root of a bounded self-aid joint linear operator. So basically, we studied that the uh, existence and uniqueness theorem. We were looking at these questions uh, that what can we say about the existence of such a operator and under what conditions would it exist and moreover if it exists what is the uniqueness of the same is it unique or can we find some other operator of the same kind right so let's again look at the theorem again so the theorem here states that every positive bounded self adjoint and linear operator so the operator should be positive it should be bounded it should be self adjoint and it should be linear if it is all of these and moreover it is defined on the complex hilbert space in that case we are sure and certain that it has a positive square root a and moreover if this exists it is also unique so this is also one important thing right moreover we say that this operator a this commutes with every bounded linear operator on h which commutes with t so uh, whatever is the given operator if you have some other operator say s and if we have t s is equal to s t so that means s commutes with t then whatever is the square root it would also commute with that particular s right so the proof here is quite lengthy so sit back and uh, pay attention to the proof although the steps they are very simple in nature so let's get started with the proof we have to prove the existence and uniqueness in this theorem so we'll be proving that by the following steps the first steps uh, the first step here it tells uh, us that we'll first be showing that if the theorem holds under the addition assumption that t is less than identity operator it also holds without that assumption so that means if we prove the result whenever we have the operator t less than equal to i then that particular theorem is also valid without this assumption so the proof would be uh, done without this assumption also so this is what we will be proving first why this is required this would be required in the further parts as you you'll see in the proof letter okay uh, so in the second part we'll be proving that the existence of this positive square root so we are calling a to be the positive square root of the operator t so that means we could write a square is equal to t right uh, how we will obtain this existence we'll be obtaining it from the sequence a n x so now you you will be defining a n now what is a n a n is basically sequence of operators we are the first member we are defining this to be the zero operator and the other members they are defined recursively using this relation that uh, you have a n plus one is equal to a n plus half times of t minus a n square where what is n n varies from zero one and so on so you'll be obtaining a one by substituting n is equal to zero and so on right so uh, we are taking this sequence of operators and we are saying that this sequence would converge to ax where a would be the limit operator for this particular sequence so we'll be obtaining this uh, existence uh, of a a the square root of the operator t by proving this thing and moreover in this part we'll be also proving the commutativity as given in the statement of this theorem and lastly in the third part we'll be proving about the uniqueness of this particular operator so that means we'll be taking two different uh, square positive square roots of t and we'll be proving they are nothing but the same thing so first of all we have to prove first part for the first part we'll be proving that if the uh, some uh, this the, the result is true whenever you have t less than equal to i then it is also true without it so we'll be using induction here right let's see how first of all if your operator is a zero operator in that case what would be the square root it is also the zero operator so we the result is true in this case no need uh, anything isn't required to be done here right so here we assume that um, 
in order to prove the more general result we prove that the given operator t is a non zero operator so if this is a non zero operator and moreover we know according to this quartz inequality the inner product of tx with x that is less than equal to the norm of tx the norm of this first one and multiplied with the norm of this second quantity x here and moreover you know what is the Uh, again use uh, expanding this this is less than equal to the norm of t and the norm of x one norm of x is already present so you have norm x square right now because t is a non zero operator so its norm would also be non zero right this is the distance of this particular operator so this thing would be non zero and if it is non zero we could divide both sides by this norm t and if we substitute Q is equal to the operator t divided by its norm. So basically, it would be the unit uh, operator, right? Q. So in this case, you will be having t divided by norm t into x uh, applied on to x in the product with x, and on this side, this would be would not be there because we have divided by norm t, right? So we are calling this thing as Q. as defined so we have the inner product of qx with x less than equal to the norm of x square and you could write the norm of x square to be the inner product of x with x and what is this x that is ix so uh, what is x this is the identity operator x here so if you notice that in this case we have proved that this inner product is less than equal to this inner product so we could compare these two operators the operator q here is less than equal to the operator i here right so in this case q is that particular operator with which we'll be first proving that our result is true and then we'll be applying the same result without this assumption and we'll be proving that there is no uh, difference having taken this condition or we are not taking this particular condition so in this case first of all let us assume that we wanted to prove the result first of all for q and then we'll be moving uh, stating that it does not matter if this q is less than equal to i or not so we first of all assume that this q has a unique positive square root and we are calling that square root to be b right so obviously by definition we would have b square is equal to q so that means what would be the square root of t if you remember what was your q your q was the operator t divided by its norm so from here your t is nothing but the norm of t multiplied with q right so if you take the square root of this operator t you will be taking the square root of these quantities right and what is the square root of q we have defined it to be b right so you have norm t uh, raised to power half multiplied with b so basically this is the square root of the operator t right so uh, and you can check this if you take the power of this as square so you will be seeing that it is norm t multiplied with b square and what is b square that is nothing but q and this whole thing is equal to t so you have the square of this thing as equal to t so obviously this is the square root of the operator t right now because the operator q we have selected this to be the unique positive square root so that means if this is unique positive square root that means it would also imply the uniqueness of the positive square root of t if q is unique so that means this quantity over here this is also unique so that means t is also having the unique positive square root so that means we have proved that the theorem under the conditions that t is less than I, this identity operator is also true whenever we drop this condition so that means if we prove the theorem under the additional assumption of t less than equal to i we are done by because it would be true without the assumption as well so this is our first part right so let's again look back our at our conditions at our statements the first part has been proved next we wanted to prove that if we consider a sequence of this kind so if we take the first member as a0 the next member defined recursively in this manner right and uh, so here in this case we would prove the existence of this positive square root by proving that the sequence a and x would converge to ax so let's see the proof for this part for part b we assume that equation 1 is true so that means 
a zero is the zero operator and all other entries are defined recursively in this way we are assuming this thing so basically what is your sequence of operators the first uh, thing that is given to be a zero which is the zero operator now if you substitute n is equal to zero in this case you would have a one here zero plus one that is equal to a zero plus half times of t minus a zero square now substituting the value of a zero here as the zero operator you obtain half of t again you have a2 what is this a2 a2 is a1 plus half times of t minus a1 how do you obtain this when you substitute n is equal to 1 into this particular relation right so you have a2 is equal to a1 plus half times of t minus a1 square so when you substitute a1 as this thing from here and a1 square as the square of this thing and simplify a bit you will obtain this thing and you could proceed in the similar manner so basically we have a sequence of operators which are nothing but composed of t there are uh, some powers of t so each of this a n that is a polynomial in the operator t and moreover all these a n's they are self adjoint operators why because there are some polynomial in t and t is given to be itself a self adjoint operator so all the a n's they are self adjoint in nature and moreover they all commute with each other why because t commutes with t and uh, and they all commute with every operator that commutes with t why because they are only composed of t itself right so here we'll be proving some results in this part we'll be first proving that all of these a n's they are less than the identity operator first thing second thing will be proving that we have a relation of this kind among these sequence of operators so every a n is less than equal to a n plus 1 so that is another result that means we will be uh, proving the monos monotonicity of these operators right and next we'll be proving that the sequence a n x is converging to a x where what is a a is nothing but the square root of this operator t and lastly we'll be proving the commutativity so that means we'll be proving that whenever uh, t is some operator t is the given operator and if s commutes with it where s is any operator defined on h right so this s would also commute with its square root over here right so s would be bounded and linear operator on h so we'll be first proving these four parts and then uh, our part b the proof of for b would automatically be proved right so let's proceed towards the proof of first part here we wanted to prove that each of the elements here of a n that is less than the identity element so starting with a0 a0 you know that is a zero operator so zero operator is obviously less than the identity operator so this thing a thing is done now next we wanted to prove that all of a1 a2 a3 a4 and so on they are also less than the identity operator so we assume that n is greater than zero because for n is equal to zero we have our result so uh, if we let n greater than zero and because i minus a n minus 1 that is a self adjoint operator why because they are composed of the polynomials in t right so if this is a self adjoint operator its square is a positive quantity this is a result on self adjoint operator right and moreover t is less than i that would imply that i minus t is a positive operator we can shift this t to this side and have this result right so using this thing and from equation one what was your equation one it was the definition where you have defined a0 and a1 let me show you what is the definition for this part here a0 is 0 and a n plus 1 is a n plus half times of t minus a n square right okay so here from this and using this equation one what do we have because i minus t is a positive operator and all of this i minus a n minus one square that is also positive so adding them is also a positive quantity so here we can simplify the result we can open up this square so we have i the squ uh, square of identity operator is the identity operator itself then minus two times of a n minus one and then plus the square of this thing which is again some 
uh, operator a n minus 1 square right so now we could club this this identity term with this identity terms making up a whole identity right and then we have a n minus 1 here this term and then you have this term and then you have this term over here now using the relation uh, defined in equation 1 what was that the definition for the sequence a n so here you have i here a n minus 1 here and you can take this half common from here so you have this thing and using the definition here what is this thing this is your half of now you could club these terms together now these terms they all form a n using the definition for equation 1 let me show you you have a n plus 1 is equal to a n plus half times of t minus a n square so we have now the relation in n minus 1 right so you have the relation in a n minus 1 so this thing would be equal to a n so you have from here i minus a n to be greater than 0 operator so you have now, now notice that this is not 0 number this is the 0 operator because we are comparing it with the same operators and not number so you have i minus a n as a positive operator which is greater than equal to the 0 operator so that means you have a n less than equal to the identity operator so the proof of first part has been completed now in the second part we'll be proving that we have a relationship among all these operators of the given sequence of the assumed sequence uh, and the relation is such that you have a n less than a n plus 1 for n varying from 1 2 3 and so on now in order to prove this result we'll be using the principle of mathematical induction so here according to equation 1 the first part for whenever you have n as equal to 0 your you are done why because a0 is a 0 operator right so and what is your a1 that is half times of t and t is given to be a positive operator so obviously half time of t is also greater than equal to the 0 operator why because it is a positive operator so you have a0 less than equal to a1 from here right so you have this thing now next we'll be proving that a n minus 1 is less than equal to a n for any fixed n if this thing is true so that means we are assuming that the result holds for n minus 1 so we'll be proving the result for n so we'll be proving that if this thing holds a n minus 1 less than e the operator a n so we'll be proving that this a n is less than equal to a n plus 1 right so using equation 1 what do we have again what is this quantity now we wanted to prove that this thing so what do we have a n plus 1 minus a n this is greater than equal to 0 we will be proving this thing if this is so we have this result right so we are taking this quantity a n plus 1 minus a n now according to equation 1 where we have defined our sequence of operators let me show you once more so this is equation number one where we have defined our sequence right so using this thing again in our proof for part two let's go back here so we can open up the definition for a n plus one it is a n plus half t minus a n square we can open up the definition for a n this is a n minus one minus half times of y uh, minus because we have a bracket here right yeah minus half t minus a n minus 1 so we could club up the terms here simplify a bit so you have a n here minus a n minus 1 right this half t uh, and this minus half t they got cancel out with each other and so i'm sorry here we do not have a minus sign because i'm taking i have already taken this minus sign inside this term okay fine so this half t and half t they cancel out with each other so we are left with minus half a n square and this term here right now you could open up this bracket the square the square of a square minus b square is a minus b a plus b so you have this these terms right so next what we, you uh, next you can see here that you have a n minus 1 a n minus a n minus 1 
this term and this term they are same so you could take out this as common so you have the operator identity left behind from the first term and from the last term you have minus half and this term left behind so now we wanted to prove that this term is a positive operator so that means you have to prove that this thing is a positive operator right now this thing the first part here a n minus a n minus 1 this is positive why because we have assumed it to be positive here according to the principle of mathematical induction the result holds whenever we have n is equal to n minus 1 right and the second part is also positive why because you have i uh, all the a n's less than the identity operator so obviously when you subtract it from the identity operator the, that operator would be a positive operator so that means if you have both of these parts as positive this quantity is also positive if this is positive so that means the operator a n plus 1 is greater than or equal to a n so this is the proof for second part now moving further let's see the proof for part 3 here we will be proving that the sequence of these operators a and x that would converge to some operator a x where what is this a this a is nothing but the square root of this operator t here right Th this is what we will be proving here so here we have proved that whatever sequence we have considered here of these operators a0 a1 a2 and so on this is a monotone sequence according to part second as i have told you and moreover according to part one we have proved that all the ans they are less than the identity operator so we you can use the following theorem which would imply the existence of a bounded self-adjoint linear operator a so that means we are talking about the limit of the sequence such that a and x would converge to the sequence a x so let's see what is this result it tells us that if tn is some sequence of self adjoint bounded linear operators on the given hilbert space so that means you have a relationship of this kind that t1 is less than equal to t2 t2 is less than equal to t3 and so on of this kind where what is this k k is the maximum or the greatest of all the uh, operators k so here that particular k is a bounded self adjoint linear operator defined on h right so it tells us that this would exist and moreover according to this theorem or if tj commutes with k then every tm would con uh, commutes with k right and moreover if the sequence tn is strongly convergent in this case then the limit operator t is also linear bounded self adjoint and it would satisfy this relationship we have already studied it in the uh, previous videos right this result we have also proved so using this result and talking about the sequence of monotone operators we have mm, the existence of this operator a which is the unique operator it is linear it is bounded and it is self adjoint and moreover it satisfies this condition so here it tells us that the sequence a and x is strongly convergent so the sequence would converge and according to equation one we would have a n plus one x minus a n x that is equal to half times of t x minus a n square of x so the whole of this thing would converge to zero as n goes to infinity right so uh, here we are saying a the sequence a n x this converges and according to equation one what is the according to definition this thing is equal to this thing right and this thing converges to zero why as n approaches 0 because we have just proved that the sequence a n square x that converges so when you take n to be infinity this would tend towards 0 and you will be left with half t of x right because because t n plus uh, i'm sorry the sequence a n x here this converges to a of x so that means when you take n to be infinity this left hand side so limit of this thing limit n goes to infinity of this thing this would also go to ax this would also go to ax so ax minus ax that is 0 
right so this left hand side is zero that means the right hand side is also zero so that means you have tx minus a square x that is equal to zero for all of this x if that is so you could shift uh, this a square x to the other side so from here you have t is equal to a square and because a is positive a is a positive operator why because you have this relationship that all of these sequences they are monotone in nature and moreover the least of this is zero operator so you have uh, zero less than a1 less than a2 and so on and lastly we would have our limit operator that is a so obviously a is a positive operator and uh, so why this is positive we are giving another proof here we are saying this a n is a positive operator if this is a positive operator according to part second that we have just proved its inner product a n x with x that is also positive for every x it implies that this a n x would converge to this a x whenever we have the inner product a x with x as positive for every x by the continuity of the inner product why because if you have the sequence a n converging to a then the inner product would also be the same right and lastly in part 4 we will be proving about the commutativity of the given operator so we will be proving that if there is some operator s such that s t is equal to t s then that particular s would also commute with the square root a right so we will be proving this result now because we know and we have stated above that all the ans they are self adjoint linear operators and moreover they all commute with each other and they also commute with every operator that commutes with t so they commute with themselves and moreover whichever operator commutes with t they also commute with them so suppose s is commuting with t so that means all of these ans would also commute with s right because s is commuting with t for every x right now if we take n going to infinity here for this particular case so obviously s t is equal to t s would imply now taking the limit n going to infinity this a n would converge to a and this a n also converges to a so you have a s is equal to s a for all x belonging to h right so that means we have proved that if you have some operator which commutes with t so that would also commute with the positive square root so this proves our part second here right we have proved the existence we have let me show you our statements once more so we have proved the existence of such a sequence which which is defined in this manner such that the sequence converges to this ax here and moreover we have also prove the commutativity which is present here nextly la and lastly in the last part we'll be proving the uniqueness of the positive square root so let's have a look here at the proof of part c which is the last among all so here we'll be proving uniqueness of the theorem so for that we assume that we have two positive square roots of the given operator t we are calling first by a second by b and we proving uh, we'll be proving that both of them they are equal to each other so uh, if they are both the positive square root so that means a square is also t b square is also t so both the square of the, uh, both of them is nothing but t so they are same right so if we take this bt right and we are just writing t as b square by this uh, above relation so you have bb square here and according to the commutativity of b b commutes with itself so you could write b square b here again you could write this b square as t so you have bt is equal to tb so from this relation you have bt is equal to tb so you could make out that this b that commutes with the operator t right if b commutes with the operator t so that means it would commute with its square root what is the square root a is the square root right so it would commute with a so you had uh, you would have ab is equal to ba according to the part we have just proved above right and moreover because x is some arbitrary member we could define a minus b applied on to x as y because they are different uh, operators right 
this is our assumption we are defining y to be like this right and because we know both a and b are positive operators so if we take the inner product of this a and b with any of the element from this hilbert space we are talking taking particularly y here it is positive and with y here it is positive right and moreover because we have a b is equal to b a and we have a square is equal to b square so in this case we have the inner product of a y with y and the inner product of b y with y both when added you have according to the properties of inner product you have the inner product of a plus b y with y right so now you could expand the definition of this y here we have defined our y as a minus b times of x so we are using this thing here and writing it like this right so now what is this operator a plus b and a minus b that is a square minus b square and you know a square minus b square because both of them they are equal to t right so when you take the difference that is nothing but the zero operator so you have the inner product of zero x with y and what is this thing this is a zero operator so that means you have considered the addition of these two inner products and that is equal to the zero operator this is a z number zero right <laughs> obviously inner products give us numbers so this is the number zero so if the addition of two inner products because that is the positive quantity is zero so both of them has to be zero right if uh, both of them has to be zero from here and moreover because a is a positive operator a is self adjoint so that means it would itself has a positive square root according to the definition because it satisfies all the assumption it is linear it is bounded it is self adjoint and uh, it is positive so it would have a square root we are calling that square root by c so that means c square would be equal to a in this case and according to the proof that we have already proved according to the result that we have proved this c is a self adjoint operator right so that we could write because we have obtained this result that zero is equal to the inner product of a y with y so you could write instead of a as c square right now because c is self adjoint you could shift it to this side by c cross and this in this case c is equal to c cross according to the definition for self adjointness so you have the inner product of cy with y and what is this this is the norm square of cy right this is according to the properties of norm and inner product that you already know so you have the norm square of something as equal to 0 so according to the properties of norm a norm is a zero quantity whenever the element within it is itself a zero quantity so you have cy is equal to zero right if you have cy zero what would be ay ay by a is c square right so you have ay as c square y so you could write this to be c applied on to cy and the cy is zero so c of zero is zero so you have ay as equal to zero similarly you would have by as equal to 0 why because you could again take by so you, instead of b you could write some other operator c in a similar manner you could prove that that dy is also 0 and that dy is 0 that means by is 0 right you could uh, by the similar arguments we can change the name and we would obtain by is equal to 0 now because ay is 0 by is 0 so that means the difference a y minus b y that is also zero right now using this definition because we know y is a minus b times of x so we could use this definition and if we have if we look at the norm of a x minus b x whole square so what is this thing you could write it in terms of inner products like this you could shift this term to the left hand side because A is self-adjoint, B is self-adjoint, so the difference is also self-adjoint. So you have A minus B square x and x. Now you could use the definition of y as A minus B of x. So this one power together with x is your y. So you are left with A minus B y of x. And what is A minus B of y? That is a zero. So you have the inner product as a zero. So from here you obtain that this norm is 
the norm square is equal to zero if the norm of something is zero that means the element itself has to be zero so you would have ax minus bx as equal to zero for all x so if that is so you have ax is equal to bx for all x for all the elements x that belongs to h so that means you have a is equal to b here so this proves the uniqueness of the positive square root operator and we are done here so i hope you understood this proof well the proof is simple being lengthy it is no harm studying this proof i hope you understood this one well that is it for this video thank you for watching